Hey you! Yeah you! Are you ashy? Has the fall winter transition got you so dehydrated that your skin is now overcompensating with drums of oil? Then look no further than my crowd favorite collaboration with Wish Trend, the Yin and Yang Skin Set. And it's back again by popular demand for 45% off. There's the Yin Set, the Black Set, which is catered towards sensitive, temperamental skin. And then you have the Yang Set, which is great for brightening and nourishing with vitamin E and C. For more information, feel free to look at any of the various videos I've made about these products or you can just go down to the link down below. This is only available for a limited time so get your hands on it. Now on to the debauchery. Oh not me eating Panera two days in a row even though I'm lactose intolerant but that mac and cheese hit different. And so does my large intestine that's about to fall out of my ass. Uh, you didn't ask all that. Hi, <laughs> it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skill of biscuit? I've come before you to wish you the happiest of Saturdays. Saturdays when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies in a Beat, a series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. Last week, we looked at the hilariously awful, the remarkably bad sequel to After. Not called After 2, it's actually called After We Collided. The movie adaptation to the second book in a series of books that were originally Harry Styles fan fictions that turned into very popular books that turned into also popular crappy movies. Personally, going into the list of some of my favorite bad movies in a beats, but if you haven't checked that out, it'll be up above, or you can check it out in the bad movies in a beat playlist. Today, we are finally looking at another movie in the Twilight series. For those of you that have been following this series, you know that I have henceforth talked about three of them already. We just finished up Eclipse, which seemed like yesterday, but apparently that was like four or five months ago. Wild how time passes so quickly when the world is burning. <laughs> and for the most part, looking at Twilight has slowly become sort of a, a series within a series, a seriesception, if you will. Today, we are continuing on with that and looking at the 2011 adaptation of the first half of the final book of Twilight called Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn part one. Now, for those of you that have not seen my other videos on Twilight, I would encourage you to watch those first, but I'm not gonna expect you to sit and watch that for an hour and a half, two hours, and then come back to this video. It's a lot of work, so I'll just explain the basics. I grew up a stereotypical Twi hard. I was a very, 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 very devoted <laughs> Twilight fan when I was in about eighth grade. Going into high school, I read all the books. I was Team Jacob. He was tall, brown, and brooding. Edward was okay, take or leave it. Also had a giant crush on Boo Boo Stewart. That has not changed. But yes, I was a huge fan of all the fighting, all of the brooding, all of the toxicity. Then I grew up, realized that Edward was fucking creepy. Jacob was just as toxic as Edward. And Bella somehow was able to get both of these attractive men to be completely enthralled. I would die for you, even though she had the personality of lawn clippings. And here we are, the beginning of the end, essentially of the series. Now we're kind of like left with what's left. At this point, Bella's very much so cemented that she's gonna be with Edward. Bella and Jacob have really had this conversation of how she will always choose Edward for some reason. So in essence, the love triangle's over. And now we just have like closing up loose ends for the next two movies. So riveting, sounds like a fun time. Now, with that said, I read the book. I don't remember anything of the book. I don't remember a whole lot from the book other than, uh, spoiler, wedding, wrecking ball sex, and vampire human spawn. But then when I started watching the movie, I realized I didn't even remember anything from the movie, which is when I realized I'd actually never seen it, which damn. <laughs> If you recall, again, I was a Twi hard. Even throughout watching the movies, I was never like a big fan of the movies, but I'd watch them, again, out of this feeling of like cult-like obligation, like I'm a Twi hard, we watch the movies. But I guess by the time I reached 16, I said, I just, I cannot care, I just don't. So this is the first time you see him. I don't even have like a cushion of nostalgia, so to speak, to even make me uh, be like, oh yeah, the movie looked better when I was 16. It looked better when I was a kid. And it's like, no. And I will warn you, preliminary thoughts. The movie's very meh, like extremely meh, in incredibly meh, which ironically makes it the best movie out of all the <laughs> 
because if, if you can make it to at least May, you're doing soaring above all of the other movies. With that said, before we begin, I would like to do a verbal disclaimer. I usually do one in the beginning in writing, a little tongue in cheeks, a little funny, ha ha ha, but every once in a while when I notice something is going to be a prominent part of the retelling of the story, I would like to bring your attention to it so that if you decide you would not like to partake in this week's movie, I will let you know that it's totally okay. No one's judging you, it's totally fine. Think of yourself. It has a lot of images that could be very very triggering for those of you that have eating disorders, uh, particularly if you are suffering from a very restrictive one, this is gonna probably be a bit, it's gonna be a lot. Um, a lot of the movie is um, largely focused on Bella being quite sick and quite frail, and that results in her kind of eroding away. Again, uh, the movie's not that great. <laughs> movie's not that great, so it's the, don't feel as though you need to risk your health just to kind of watch this movie or discuss this movie with me, it's trash. Again, it's not worth putting you in harm's way, so again, for your discretion advice, if you are part of those audiences. Now, without further ado, let's look at Breaking Dawn part one. Oh, it should have been part two so I could rhyme. Now, without further ado, let's look at the one before two, Breaking Dawn part one. So the fourth movie begins with Bella and Edward's wedding. They send out invitation to friends and family. One of those friends is Jacob, of which Jacob isn't particularly happy about. Which, I know we're early into the retelling of the movie, and again, I've said in other videos that Jacob is kind of a dickhead, but why does she keep hurting him like that? Why did why does she have to do that? Yeah, I know in the last time I talked about Twilight, I was joking about like, bad girl umbrella, break them hearts, make them fight over you, battle to the death. But like, <laughs> um, as toxic as he is, she does still play a significant part in his kind of reactions to certain things. Let's act like we together, even though we not together, that type of stuff. Hot girl tings, no, I'm joking. Seriously, it's really crappy. Um, so now after all of that, she's like, hey, I'm getting married. <laughs> you wanna come to the wedding? You wanna be my best man? Like, ooh, just in the heart, bitch, damn. Like, leave him alone. Like, you've already done enough, Jesus Christ, girl. But she's like, well, I want you there. I care about you, come to my wedding. Which brings back a very particular memory for me, because I remember reading those books thinking, is this how it works? As a child, I was really confused about the notion of two men putting up with this. <laughs> like, like it was, I don't know, I just didn't get it. Is this how it works? You just find two men who love you more than they hate each other? Oh, if only it were so simple to build a harem. Granted, maybe I would do better if I didn't only go on dating apps when I was ovulating. Because in the time you're trying to vet whether or not he's a serial killer, the egg's already dropped and then you lose interest. Or is that just me? <laughs> It's really hard to build a starting lineup that way. But anyway, anywho, speaking of serial killers, what a transition. The night before their wedding, Edward comes in and he's like, hey, are you sure you wanna do this? Do you, are you sure you wanna get married? He confesses that in the 20s, there was a period in which he had kind of rebelled from Carlisle and decided to go on his own way and was drinking human blood. During which time he took up the sport of drinking the blood of would-be rapists. Hey, we all need a hobby. Hey, if you saw my teeth video, like I said, I'm very much a proponent of rapists losing limbs and or their right to live. So if you're trying to encourage me not to talk to you anymore, got nothing coming, sir. Now, apparently it wasn't to warn her of the type of carnage that Edward is capable of, but more so to alarm her that, you know, this is what you're capable of after you turn into a vampire. Like you're just bloodthirsty, endless, bloodlust. This is Bella we're talking about. So she's like, yeah, I'm just not gonna listen to you. I'm not gonna be concerned about that at all because why make her reasonable now? She hasn't been, that way the entire series, so. But for once, she does actually sit there and contemplate how her actions might affect things because she has a nightmare that she ended up killing all her friends and family and a blind bloodlust. Okay, so that foundation is too dark now. We're definitely in full winter. But it does get her considering whether or not after she transitions, she will kind of, you know, start snacking on her friends and family without abandon. Which would be a first. Her actually thinking about the consequences of her actions, but. But alas, they go forth with the wedding anyway. Beautiful wedding, by the way. Gorgeous set design. The weeping willows, is that what the, I don't know what plants are, but the, the cascading waterfall of flowers, beautiful. The dress, 
meh. And she's going down the aisle and she's looking like she's gonna poop herself and then she sees Edward and then everything's right with the world. I will say also around this time, I noticed that they've gotten better at doing the whole like, pale thing with makeup, set makeup, because oh my God, whoo, man, was he looking dry. Maybe he was also in need of a yin yang set. I wasn't gonna put that in there, but that was actually a perfect lead in. But no, in all seriousness, like he doesn't look nearly as cakey anymore. He's not dry. They gave him a loofah. They scrubbed him down, waxed him, buffed him a little bit. He looks good. But yeah, this is the fourth movie. They got a budget now. They get married, they kiss, and it seems like no one's there but them. They play flat. Fly-less bed, jealous, creep, and the last you, Bob's American mouth. That song is a bop and I have no time has passed to make that song not a bop is Still good. It's very much so an active participant of my sad, pensive playlist. Now, much like any wedding, it's the time to meet extended family. Apparently, the Cullens aren't the only vampires in the world that kind of have decided to do this lifestyle of not eating humans. They have a whole group of family that live in like Alaska and stuff who have taken up a very similar style of living. They end up meeting some of them. One of them, I don't remember her name, but they were blonde. Not my color palette. I feel like the gold eyes with the gold hair and the gold lighting and the ugly dresses, it was just too much. With the pale skin, a little bit of melanation. It might look real nice, but it was just like, it was a lot. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, anyway, one of them was mad because the Cullens have effectively befriended the, the werewolves. Neutral with the werewolves since Bella has been integrated into the family via her relationship with Jake and the other werewolves by proxy. One of the vampires is like, wow, you really invited werewolves to your freaking wedding. Boom, boom. Who again, reminder, looks like this now. God is so good. Yeah, one of them's like sad because I guess she was in love with Laurent, the black vampire in the second movie that the wolves killed. Like, girl, I forgot who you were even talking about. They killed Laurent. I'm like, who the f is that? But yeah, most of the beginning of this movie, particularly the wedding is just screen time padding. It's like, yeah, we need to get this to a decent amount of time so that it's even considered a movie. They let people do speeches. Bella, I hope you've got enough sleep these last 18 years. Won't be getting any more for a while. <laughs> Don't let everybody speak at your wedding. Edward does a speech. It was cute or whatever. Eventually, Jake does come, albeit late, and he doesn't go into the reception. And I will say he was looking kind of cute when he came out the trees, but then he talked and then I remembered, never mind. <laughs> it's still Dale Lautner. He comes to give his congratulations, whatnot, have one final dance with Bella and Edward's just fine with it. I mean, I guess it would be realistic if we had like established that she's polyamorous and everybody else is cool with it as well, but we have not. It's these two dudes who still very much so just want her. They dance incredibly intimately. Hot girl Bella tings. If I saw my man dancing with a girl like that at my wedding, Love could not save him. This is not the slow dance of someone that still has no feelings. Like I'm super okay with my choice. Yep, I'm completely resolute in my decision. I love him, I wanna be with him forever, but God, you smell good. Like girl, <laughs> stop. I honestly need to work out a schedule or something because she, she's like, look at her, she look like she over here like, God, I just wish I could smash. Like she's constantly on the edge of smashing. I know what that face is. I know the face of disgruntled sexual frustration. I live here. I built the city. Speaking of pent up sexual frustration, Jake was actually under the impression that Bella's wedding would be her last night as a human, that she'd be turning into a vampire soon thereafter. But apparently Bella was planning on going on her honeymoon, having, you know, an average normal honeymoon. She's gonna smash her husband while still human. You heard that right, people at home? The infinite masochist 
decides to do yet another incredibly masochistic thing. She weighs like a buck oh five and she's over here like, yeah, infinitely powerful superhuman strength, literally rupture me from the inside out. Bring it on, I love the danger. And Jacob, who's aware of the danger associated with that is like, he's going to kill you. And she's like, no, it's fine. I'll figure it out. Like, we'll be okay. Don't worry about it. It's none of your concern. Jacob blows a gasket. Everybody has to pull him down off of his tirade. And essentially that's the end of the wedding. Mind you, again, this one wedding took up like a good 30 minutes of the movie. Again, it's only an hour and 45 minutes. They said, you gonna see this wedding. We did all these cute ass decorations. You gonna see this damn reception. All right, you're gonna hear every speech. And then afterward, just like any other couple, they go off on their honeymoon to Rio or to a resort right outside of Rio, actually on a personal island. Money. They say ain't got money. Oh, and baby boo, that was a nice ass retreat. It was cute. But more importantly than that, we're finally at the place where they're gonna smash. We've been waiting three and a third movies to see them have sex, okay? We're finally done with the face sucking and blue balling us to death. It's her wedding night. She's a virgin, he's a virgin. She's scared nervous, you know. After shaving her legs and, and combing her hair and brushing her teeth, she goes out into the deep midnight black ocean with Edward. They skinny dip in the water. Girl, if I wasn't so afraid of the waves washing me away, that would be goals. I've never been skinny dipping because I'm scared. I don't know, I have this irrational fear that at some point I'm gonna be out in the ocean and something and a stingray is gonna zap me in the pussy. <laughs> I know, the whole vast ocean, but the one place that a stingray would wanna go. Anyway, they finally have sex. And here's where I must commence to leave my questioning, my musing, if you will, of vampire sex. Cause I have so many questions that no one has ever really answered for me. One, how does it work? How does it work? Like, how do the undead get erections? Is it always hard? Because he's like made out of stone or whatever. He's like cold as ice, hard as stone. Ooh, is it cold? That doesn't sound nice at all. <laughs> They're putting a push pop up here. <laughs> all questions and inconsistencies aside, I do want to applaud them at least. That was a pretty decent love scene. I will say like way better than after. After wishes that they could get a scene, even a quarter as impactful as that. That was good. Like we could feel the passion. My dude was breaking furniture. She wake up the next morning, pillow down all in her hair. He was ripping pillows and stuff. Girl, I get it. Maybe it is worth dying for shit. <laughs> and partially it could be the fact that we as an audience have been sitting here waiting for them to smash for over three movies at this point. So maybe we're also like, finally, which has something to do with that response. But you know, you know, as far as love scenes go, it wasn't bad. A little short. Again, we waited for three movies. I wish it was a little bit longer, but okay. And then, because he just has to ruin all the fun, the next day, Edward's like, I hurt you last night, didn't I? And then you showed that she got bruises and stuff on her arms and on her shoulders. What have I done? We may no longer smash because I can't be trusted around you because I hurt you. Bruises ain't no problem, baby boy. Some of us like mementos. <laughs> Those ain't nothing but parting gifts, my dude. But he's like, nope, can't do it, won't do it, nah. So for the next few scenes, we're just watching as Bella tries to clumsily seduce him into having sex with her again. And I feel for you, sis, smash one night after three books, after marrying him, and he don't wanna have sex? Girl, I'm mad for you. Spend all this time avoiding having sex with her. So they're doing other activities. They're going diving, playing chess, you know, all the things I came on my honeymoon to do. Wait all this time I married you and I can't get the vampire D, which broke furniture? You know it was good. And she still got a werewolf. Careful before she go home and change her mind. And also perhaps even more frustrating is that he looks so much happier now. I've never seen him smile that much this entire series. This is the most delighted he's ever been. I get it. He's happy that he's married with her and that it's the love of his life and yada, yada, yada. But also I could be getting the D. Also, did they forget he was supposed to shimmer in the sun? I don't know, I guess we're just supposed to focus on the chess game and the beautiful scenery. One night while on their honeymoon, Bella has a dream of them about to have sex, which is different from the book if I recall correctly. It was a dream about her having a baby, if I'm not mistaken. She has a dream that they're gonna like have sex on the beach and she wakes up and she's so distraught and she's about to cry. And then they end up having sex after that. 
manifestation. Back home, Jacob and the other wolves are in fighting. This is partially due to Jacob being the rightful pack leader, but he decided to give that away and he gave it to Sam. So instead of Jacob, Sam is the alpha male of the team. Seth and his sister Leah kind of lament over the fact that Jacob hasn't imprinted on anyone because that would probably help him get over this whole Bella shit. It seems as though all of those who had imprinted had become happier. They have found the person they're supposed to spend the rest of their lives with. Back at the resort with Bella and Edward. While home alone, she makes some chicken on the stove and the smell actually makes her very, very nauseous. She goes into the bathroom, she vomits. She suddenly realized that her period hasn't started. For those of you that didn't see that coming, alas, here it is. Bella is pregnant with a demon baby. Now, again, more questions about the logistics of vampire impregnation. How? Like what? Edward's undead. Edward does not have semen. So, of course, again, went to Twitter, asked Twitter, wh what is going on? Apparently, the consensus is that he's able to get her pregnant due to his vampire venom. Essentially, vampire venom has overtaken any part of his makeup that was formerly human Fluids. Fluids? Bodily fluids. God, human fluids. The word fluids is gross in general, but anyway. But yeah, vampire venom has taken over all the places where he would have had blood, semen, and any other bodily fluids. And when people said that, a lot of people said that, they said that as if that made sense. <laughs> is his sperm now venom? In theory, if his sperm is venom, then it wouldn't get her pregnant. It would turn her into a vampire, no? And going off of that, uh, saliva is a bodily fluid. Is his saliva also vampire venom? Cause the venom is Im embedded when he bites somebody, which means that it must be somewhere in his mouth, which means that if she's been making out with him this entire time, she would have already come in contact with vampire venom. So again, what? <laughs> anyway, upon discovering that Bella is pregnant, they pack everything up and swiftly run back to Forks to see Carlisle who can do some tests you know, whatever, figure out what's going on here. Jacob talks to Charlie, Bella's dad. They had told him that she had gotten a little bug while she was in Rio, so they'd be staying there for a little bit as she got some treatment. Jacob immediately knew that was untrue, so he went to the Cullens home and said, hey, what's going on, what's up? Sees Bella, says what we're all thinking. You look terrible. All jokes aside, she's dying. Whatever it is inside of her is growing exponentially and it is killing her. Jacob sees it, he's like, oh my God, what the hell? How is that even possible? What is going on? It's an abomination. Ever since anyone had figured out that Bella is not pregnant, it's just been a constant war between the pro-choice pro-lifers, honestly. It's giving me very like pro-life torture porn. All this fighting isn't good for Bella. The fetus isn't good for Bella. Say the word, Alice. Baby. First of all, we don't know that. Y'all over here like, I don't know what's going on either. So first of all, don't, we don't know what the f it is. And I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but as the movie progresses, that little demon starts to fight with inside in only slightly more terrifying ways than it would real delivery C-section type situation. Now Bella, again, being the martyr that she is, is very much so planning to have the baby to full term. Why are we surprised? We shouldn't be. Edward has been spending this entire time trying to convince her to essentially have an abortion of, of the thing. He asked Jacob to like try to get through to her. Why would it start now? Why, why? <laughs> Okay, shocker, that doesn't work either. She still wants to have it. She really is living her life like she knows she's the main character. She's like, I can't die, I just physically can't. And after this, Jake is distraught. He shifts into crappy CGI wolf form. And after yet another fight with his pack, he decides to completely leave it because once they learn of the baby, they plan to go kill it because what is it? It might be a danger to all of us, you know? Seth comes along as well, as well as Leah, who we don't learn a whole lot about other than she's the jaded ex of Sam who was left behind after he imprinted on another woman. That's unfortunate. That's her only storyline. That's all we know about her. More pro-life torture porn. Again, the thing is draining her dry, whatever it is. And she's looking really sick and really frail, quite skeletal. And Edward is really angry because essentially she's willing to throw away their entire life together, have this thing that 
but again, we don't even know what it is. We don't know. We're assuming it's a baby. We don't know that. And essentially she's telling Edward that, you know, I'm willing to die to have this baby. But they start giving her human blood and that seems to be helping a little bit with the little demon. Not too long after that, Edward ends up hearing the thing's thoughts inside of Bella's stomach, so we've lost him. There ends up being a standoff between the wolves and the vampires, cause she's having this baby, which for some reason breaks a treaty, I guess? I don't know, I'm a little confused on the specifics right there. I, that didn't really make sense. But Jacob is there to protect Bella you know, at whatever costs. And now that he's sectored off into his own pack, it's like these two wolf packs are fighting against each other. And one wolf pack has vampires who are technically their mortal en enemies. So they've gone, they've gone rogue working with the enemy to protect Bella. Again, the personality of a shoebox. She got people giving up their packs, teaming up with their mortal enemies. Girl. Bella considers baby names. If a boy, she was gonna name it EJ. Edward Jacob, not her name and her baby after both of her dudes. Who the ghetto? Speaking of the ghetto, if it's a girl, she's gonna combine her mom's name and Esme's name. Renee, Esme, Renesme. But that doesn't matter because Bella ends up accidentally dropping her cup of blood and goes to reach for it by reflex. And she breaks, oh, everything, breaks her back breaks her ribs, ruptures the placenta. And now we're in a race against time where they have to do an impromptu emergency C-section with vampires without morphine. They tried to put it in her, but it didn't have time to set in yet. They had to go, so she felt, whoo, all of it. You have vampires doing your C-section. A lot of blood, seems like a bad idea. <laughs> Rosalie gets a little bit tempted. They have to push her out of the way. And this again is another example of the only time that Kristen Stewart is a good actress is when she is writhing in pain. Girl, is she all right? Was she all right? What was she going through? She did a great job, visceral. That was the only good time she was acting. Like the only time she's a good actress is if she's in the process of death. Like objectively, if you took this scene out of this movie and put it somewhere else, it's a good scene. The baby comes out, little Renesme. God, that's an ugly name. And then Bella dies. Edward, in a panic and distraught, rushes to fill her chest with venom. He bites um, easy to access veins on her body to get the venom going through her. But if her heart had stopped before he could do any of this, then it's too late anyway. He's trying, he's hoping, he's praying. He's like, come on. Meanwhile, Jacob, distraught, depressed, that the love of his life is presumably dead, goes to kill the little the little demon baby. That is computer generated question mark? Why? It's a baby. You couldn't get, literally you could pick up, don't, but you could pick up any generic white child on the street to do this job. You There's so many little white babies that you could use to do this. Why did you CGI the baby? That's so freaking weird. But anyway, he doesn't kill the kid. He doesn't kill the demon. Instead, he imprints on her. Now, the justification that they kind of do for this in the movie and in the book, if I remember correctly, is that imprinting isn't inherently romantic, it's not inherently sexual. So in theory, you could have someone imprint on a child and it's nothing more than you are drawn to be their protector for the rest of their life, drawn to be their brother, drawn to be this like close familial tie, not necessarily sexual. However, the only people they done shown up until this point are people that are smashing, so I call a little bit pedo. I, mm. Okay. Also as a side note, they were showing like what she'll look like as she gets older. Did they have to do that to her wig? Like why? The wigs are so bad, but like hers was particularly awful. Like girl, they didn't even give her a chance. They said even the thought of you will have a bad wig. <laughs> But anyway, the wolves are here, the treat is broken. They've come to get the baby. They wanna kill the baby. I don't know why them having a baby breaks a treaty considering they didn't even know they could have children, so. But Bella's dead, so I'm pretty sure that would kill the treaty, right? Because her dying because of a vampire ultimately means that the treat is broken. I don't know, they come to kill the baby. And Jacob was like, nah, you can't kill the baby. If you kill the baby, you gotta kill me. I've imprinted on her. And apparently it's a rule in wolf culture or whatever that you aren't allowed to 
harm the person that someone's imprinted on. So they say, okay. And here we are, the final scene of the movie. While everyone's doing their own fights and whatnot, the venom is coursing through her body, reconstructing her bones and her ribs and her skin. She's regaining her consciousness, her memories, and comes back to life. But this time, as a vampire. And that's it. Oh no, wait, wait, we gotta see the Volturi because they have to still be kind of relevant for the next movie. So like, yay, the Volturi. Now it's it. Okay, so here's the thing. Despite this movie being an hour and 45 minutes, a lot of it felt like filler. The whole movie felt like it was a build up to the next movie. Like it felt like they just had to do this movie so that they could get to the last one. It was honestly largely forgettable, which brings me to my next point that I'm probably 98.9% .9 sure that next week's movie is also just gonna be the last Twilight. I don't feel like dragging this out any longer. And then we can finally put an end to this inception of a series within a series. But yeah, of all of them, this movie is probably the best technically speaking. Acting is okay, the pacing is eh, a little slow. Music wasn't particularly great. The lighting and the makeup got better though. Wigs are still pretty bad. There were actually two whole legitimately good scenes, but because it wasn't like remarkably terrible or remarkably good, it was just a movie. Riveting reviews from Kendall. It was a movie. Anywho, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, be sure to like this video. Follow me on all my socials. <laughs> Yeah. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, all of which are Kenny JD. And I'll see you guys next time.